Yes. <laughs> That is shameless. Hello, dear friends. Good afternoon. Such a beautiful, beautiful after afternoon. It's about uh, the museum closing time, and here I am in San Francisco today. This museum, De Young, is not having、uh, extended time, but.、Uh, But uh, uh, modern art museum of Thursday is museum long hour, so I came here. Oh, this one is a new one. Next time we will come to see the a Bohemian. Oh wow! We will see、uh, what is new here. Anyway, enjoy. I am so happy to to come to museum. <laughs> okay, so this one is called Sacramento Railroad Station, and it was done. In 1874, by a German artist William Hahn. This makes me wanting to go to Sacramento. So. You can see from the back, very much. Still looks like Sacramento. I think in a couple of、uh, of days or weeks, I am going to Sacramento and uh, and uh, replay the scene of this、uh, of this painting. So, the artist William Hahn came to、uh, from、uh, Germany, was trained in Dusseldorf, and came to to、uh, California to America in 1871. And、uh, this is one of、uh, his painting, and his painting. Uh, was bought by Crocker, which there is、uh, a Crocker museum in Sacramento. Crocker, Stanford, and two other people, which was、uh, the very most influential or、uh, or tycoon or influential investors or owner of the Pacific. Uh, railroad. They made a third. They made a fortune from the railway. So there are these ordinary people waiting, and there are more affluent class people taking well dressed, and the family with dog. And、uh, with the chauffeur and the beautiful groomed horse, and this might be the luggage carrier selling refreshment. And、uh, it's a, it's a, such a, a lively scene. With so many actions, the 
the railway worker, the engineers checking the engine. The horse carriage. And the little baby girl looking at the scenes with curiosity. This must be a, a tired traveler sitting and just relax a little bit. What is this scene? A mattress or something? The closing, the wood case. Chicago. Wow, this goes to Chicago. <laughs> and that's uh, the American aristocrat. That was uh, that was the gold rush just uh, after the gold rush. 49, 1849 was the gold rush. And this must be the heyday, the peak of, uh, of the California hot days. And if you go to San Francisco, uh, go to uh, Sacramento, you can still see that street behind there was a train stop, train station, and that train station feels a little bit further away. And there was a river beside, and I the the, the behind that seems like a, like a, an apartment building, and those are commercial streets. And uh, under under that under that roof are usually the saloon, the Western saloons. Oh, this is a so vivid, so vivid. Every character is uh, so well addressed, and uh, this young little girl, young lady very well educated and maybe she has taken ballet class the way she stands the way her posture is just uh, very very uh, very very uh, well brought up Do not know which family this one is uh, describing. This gentleman does not look like uh, Leland Stanford. Stanford uh, is uh, a more broader, uh, broader-faced guy. And this, this in modern days, in today, must be the soft software coder this kind of career and uh, they made something that can can live a life travel but not yet to the level of these established families the onlookers oh this is such a a lively painting and uh, I am coming a little bit at the end of the museum. Oh, I do not remember seeing this piece. Do you hear me? <laughs> I do not remember seeing this piece. 
I do not want to wear my microphone. So this one is just uh, facing to the camera. I am in museum. This one, Eastman Johnson, the pension claim agent. This is, uh, I love this kind of painting that has uh, so, um, so lively describe people's uh, expression. This uh, guy without a leg and uh, he is needing in need of the help. He's uh, so humble and so, so petty in front of this Orgueilleuse, powerful guy, which is a pension claim agent. And this might be another client of this, uh, this agent. Let's take a look at this American Civil War fought over the issue of slavery was the most divisive and uh, defining event in the nation's history. Nearly every American had a family member, friend or neighbor among the approximately one million wounded and 623 killed, three quarters of all battle wounds were the extremity resulting, were two extremity resulting in more than 30,000 amputation among Union soldiers. The pension claim agent depict one such veteran who requests compensation for his injury from the government claim agent. These are the people who sacrifice their life and uh, Sometimes when you see it, it's kind of a heartbreaking. Oh, sorry, for the for the surrounding sound, and it is heartbreaking to see people that the hero heroic fact end up in such a, a humble and. Uh, inferior condition. It's a, such is life. This is a very Eastman Johnson, still the same gentleman, a different sugaring of between 1861 and 65, Eastman Johnson visited his hometown of, of, okay. <laughs> This is sugar, it's in Maine. So this seems like making sirop d'arab, n'est-ce pas? It's like uh, the red maple tree I think a different sugaring of. I will take a picture of it. Okay. The museum is closing. Okay. So here is a piece of painting by Albert Bierstadt, the last of Buffalo, study for the last of Buffalo. And the last of Buffalo oh, is quite a a famous painting i i do not recall very clearly but uh, that period of time it was uh, it was one of uh, the very uh, influential painting it was uh, the killing of buffaloes and uh, oh, I, I i actually kind of forget it anyway these are the indian people the the, the native indian uh, American people and uh, the Native Americans uh, in 
Canada, it's First Nation, maybe. Anyway, they kill the buffaloes, and I heard there is a particular way to kill the buffaloes. The old time people, it's about a, a nature's fight, right? It's just, it's not. <laughs> In nowadays, we say animal protectionist, animal protection, but that was the old time. There were plenty of buffaloes. I think there was a technique, I heard there was a technique to kill the buffaloes. Uh, the people run and chase the buffaloes, chase until uh, a mountain cliff, and the buffaloes was chased, and they have no place to go but to jump out to, to the cliff. This is what I heard the story. Maybe I will need to verify it. But uh, I, I definitely will check about the last buffalo. It's a very influential. I suddenly bump into it. Do not have a very clear, um, very clear uh, memory of it. And uh, in a lot of museum or in a lot of art, lectures talking about uh, Albert Biersch that uh, this the last the last of Buffalo uh, the last of Buffalo and you can search more about it and uh, so Albert Biersch that is uh, a German artist as you can see from the name and he came to California. I think he was a friend of John Muir, and uh, he, he fell in love with Yosemite, with the California landscape, with the redwood, and he has done a lot of uh, a beautiful, magnificent, and uh, just uh, grandiose, Expressionist of uh, of uh, impressionist, not expressionist. Expressionist expressing, expressionist in art is another category of it's a, 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 a category of its own, and he has done a lot of uh, a wonderful painting. And in Higgins Museum in Stockton, there were a big collection of his artwork. I have been to uh, Stockton, this Higgins Museum. Maybe we will go there to see again. And his painting style is very expressive and uh, with a little bit of uh, his own uh, personal touch and, uh, and uh, imagination. So some artists say that his way of painting is a little bit uh, uh, imaginatory of, uh, of, uh, of the landscape. He is honest to the landscape, but uh, on the other hand, he put, for example, he put this mountain and that mountain together to glorify the land instead of, uh, instead of uh, uh, do it as a um, photographic realization or realistic uh, imagery of uh, the landscape. So that was his style. And what we can see from this painting is the strength of it. This painting, the whole, the whole uh, focal point, if I say, without any uh, art, education myself without any art education without any uh, deeper understanding just uh, as an uh, outsider the focal point is the white horse the white horse give a lot of white color but actually i feel there is if i do this painting well if i do this painting there is uh, uh, under darker force here is the 
the, the black or brown buffalo carries so much stress. It's not expressing out, but it's the accumulation of energy, of stress, of anger, of fighting for life. It's just, especially this eye and this one stroke of eye get so intense and you feel at the beginning or at a very blank point you see the white horse screaming and the man screaming and comparing with all this I just feel this hidden power struggle unfairness injustice why am I to be killed why this place is not my land I may be a little bit expressive or put too much of my own feeling, the blood in here, in the mouth, and I just feel so, so, so intense of this. The dark force, the hidden power, the ancient stress, the ancient resource, and this black, dark buffalo representing the history, the origin of this piece of land. No matter how bright you emphasize other elements, no matter how glorious, how colorful, how bright the other element is, the hidden stress is something that touch our heart. Do I make any sense? I will check the buffalo painting. Bye bye friends. I love you. I really do. Do 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 do.